my name is Mark Haber and I'm a shoulder surgeon. In this video I'm going to discuss how we, I perform a double row rotator cuff repair mainly concentrating on the surgical technique for those who are interested. When the rotator cuff tears it generally detaches from the bone and then retracts. These arrows indicate the original site the tendon was attached to and as you can see on this diagram it has pulled back from its original attachment. The aim of the surgery is to bring the tendon back in contact with its bony attachment referred to as its footprint. This is performed by attaching sutures to the tendon which can be pulled to reduce the tendon back to the footprint. This is done when we're performing a double row repair by attaching sutures to the inner aspect or the medial aspect of the footprint called a medial row anchor. Once we've applied enough sutures to the tendon Traction can be placed on the sutures to reduce the tendon to its footprint. We continue to attach enough sutures so that there is firm attachment of the tendon to bone. Once we've placed all the sutures in place, we can then attach the sutures to the outer aspect of the footprint, what we call the lateral row anchors. We have to put all the sutures into lateral row anchors. This then provides firm contact between the tendon and bone. Tendon can't jap, jump gaps, so we have to eliminate any gap between the tendon and bone and eliminate any micromotion. This is an animation showing how we perform the surgery. Again, we place the medial anchor first and then we pass multiple sutures through the tendon. This is an example of what we call a horizontal mattress suture. And once we've placed enough sutures in, we can then pl pull tra pl place traction on the tendon to reduce it back to its original footprint we then take all our sutures and place them into the lateral row anchors. These are the anchors we currently use. These anchors uh, have excellent fixation into bone. By placing approximately, so by placing approximately a two millimeter hole, we can place these anchors into the bone. We then deploy the anchor, and as you can see, this compresses the anchor into a ball. We are thus able to achieve a large anchor through a tiny hole. We repeat this if necessary, depending on the size of the tear. And once we've placed the medial row anchors with their sutures, we then need to pass the sutures through the tendon. We do this by using what is called a suture passer, which pushes a suture through the tendon, then grasps the suture, and so we can pull the suture through the tendon. Once we have placed all the sutures through the tendon, we then a need to place the sutures into the lateral row. The current anchor I use for the lateral row is called a footprint anchor made out of peak. This has the advantage of having an internal locking mechanism. So once the sutures are placed through the anchor, the anchor inserted into bone and tensioned, we can lock that suture. So the sutures that we pass through the tendon can be then placed into the loop and pull through so the sutures from the tendon are passed into the anchor.
We now prepare the lateral row. We first place a hole specifically designed for the size of the anchor being used. We then grab the suture with a suture grasper from the sutures that were placed through the tendon and we thread those sutures into the anchor. Once the sutures have been placed through the anchor, the anchor can then be introduced through a portal into the shoulder joint. These anchors have a press fit so they are gently tapped into the bone. Once the anchor is in position, the sutures can then be gently tensioned so they are nice and taut, firmly attaching the tendon to the bone and eliminating any gap. Once the sutures are nicely taut, the knob can be turned to lock those sutures into the anchor. So in summary, we place medial row anchors and maybe other sutures. The sutures are passed through the tendon over the top into a lateral row anchor and after that the lateral, o lateral row anchors are tightened to compress the tendon firmly against the bone. Once completed, the sutures can be uh, cut from the outer aspect of the anchor and we can see that the tendon is now firmly affixed to the bone. Here is an operative video of how we perform the repair. You can see we need to attach that tendon to bone. First of all, I pass a free suture, which is not fixed to an anchor, to assess the degree that the tendon will return back to the bone. We can see in this repair, we can gain good repair of the tendon. Now I pass the sutures which are fixed on the medial aspect through the tendon so we can see we get good apposition of the tendon back to the bone. So this is an example of a footprint anchor. We pass the sutures into the anchor. We're now tapping the anchor into the bone. Once we've tapped the anchor firmly into the bone, we can now pull the sutures one at a time, snug it all up so we can see the tendon firmly attached to the bone. We perform this several times, removing the sutures from the anchor, and then we repeat it again for all the remaining sutures Again, placing them through the anchor, tightening it up, snugging up, locking it in. And now we can see we've firmly attached the tendon back to the bone. I would like to thank you for taking the time listening to this presentation. Please click on the like button if you thought this presentation was useful. And the subscribe so that I can keep you up to date on current information. If you have any questions, please let me know. You can do that by contacting me on our, my, the website www.so.com.au. Thank you again for listening to this presentation.